Hello, and this is another lecture on fluid mechanics, and it's on streamline and trajectory, and it's got a method which I use to sort to find the answer. So it's an, uh, another one that's kind of taught to the exam. So it's not the exact method, but it works. Right now, first the streamline. This is the path that it's taking. So, uh, so the path that a fluid's taking. So it's uh, tangent to the velocity the streamlines are and the trajectory is just going to tell you where it's going to go uh, just like normal words so we've got a definition here so when you have a, a velocity field u with u v w then this is our streamline equation which is dx1 and dx2 dx3 these are all equal and these are our different components so there could be x y z in a lot of cases and we've got our u v w which is from here our velocity field and this is like it called to ds. Trajectory, that's just the same. So we've got these components here, x, t, and s. So these are our x's. Uh, t will just be inside the u, v, and w, as will x, y, and z. So th they can be functions of x, y, z, and t. Um, and the s is just the ds on the end. Here we've got no s on the end, it's just t, so it's a function of x and t, so the trajectory is to do with the velocity field again here, uh, just the same but with a dt on the end. And when you want to find the solution of something, so you want to find the solution, you want to find the streamline of the function or you want to find the trajectory, then I do it in this form here, which is to say x1, x2, x3 is equal to, these are the initial conditions, so you'll have some initial properties. Uh, so at the initial point x1 will actually equal x10 in this case, x2 will equal x20, x30 and then you want to multiply that by what the actual value you found is which is the x1, x2, x3 and this will make sense now with our first example which is for the streamline so we're going to use this here which is our velocity field u, uvw where u is t cubed times x1 v is t squared times x2 and w is t4 times x3 and we've got these initial conditions saying that when s is 0 uh, let all the x's equal x10, x20, x30 so that's a nice easy initial condition right so first thing we want to do is we want to get that initial formula here and put that down with all what we've got here so we'll put the uvw in place yeah. Now what we want to do is we want to solve it for the x1, x2, and x3. And now because they're all equal, we can just ignore these parts. And let so we have dx1 over t squared d, uh, x1 equals ds. Now what we can do is we see this t cubed. We can move that up here. Make more sense here. So it's multiplying by the ds. So now we've got two integ an integral on each side. So if we integrate this side, then it's a simple logarithm of the x1 because the differentiation's on the top. And over here, we're integrating ds, and there is no s in here, so we're just going to multiply by s. Then to find the x1, we just raise this everything to the power e, because that will cancel the log, so we get x1 equals e to the power of st cubed. And that's our x1. We do the exact same for x2 and x3, which should be pretty straightforward, uh, giving these solutions here. And so here's our initial conditions, what we found here. So we've got x1, x2, x3. At s is 0, that's our initial conditions, gives us these. And then, as I said in the method that I've, I use, we just multiply by the x1, x2, and x3 that we found, which is the e s to the t cubed, es to the t squared, es to the t4, and this is our solution for the streamline. We do similar for the trajectory. We've got different initial conditions. We've got, uh, this time, t is 0. We've got the exact same velocity field, to make it simple, and these are our in initial. So we write down the formula again. Just here, we'll add equal dt. We've got the same underneath, and we solve it just the same letting this part equal dt, letting this part equal dt, and letting this part equal dt, and solve it for x1, x2, x3. Um, integrate this side, get log x1 again, 
integrate this side. Now this has actually got a t now, so we can make it t4 over 4. Then we do everything to power e again to get rid of the log. Then we get x1 equals e to the t4 over 4. And again, we've got our initial conditions here, where t is 0. Let that equal this. This will all get, this will all get you marks in the exam. Um, and we've got x1, x2, x3 equaling the initial conditions, multiplied what we found for x1, x2, x3, and that's the solution. I hope that's made sense. Any problems, comment.